We're often told that dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago. Therefore, they never could have coexisted with humans. Is this really true? Or is there evidence that supports the contrary? This week on Paleomania. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan the Raptor Guy and welcome to this week's episode of Paleomania. It's a well-known fact that dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago due to a combination of intense volcanic activity and an asteroid impact in the Yucatan Peninsula. Because of this, they never could have shared the Earth with humans. At least, that's what's shared in school and movies and books and TV documentaries. <laughs> Those are pretty trustworthy sources, so they must be true, right? <laughs> right? What's the basis for this belief that dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago anyway? Well, the basis is basically the evolutionary scientist's interpretation of the Earth's fossil-bearing rock layers, collectively called the geologic column. They believe that the geologic column was formed over millions and millions and millions of years as sediment was slowly deposited, layer by layer. They also believe that it took long, long, long periods of time, millions or tens or hundreds of millions of years, for the geologic column to be formed. As I've discussed in previous videos, each of the rock layers that we find in the geologic column contains certain sets of animals and plants. Dinosaur fossils are only found in three of the rock layers that we find in the geologic column, called Mesozoic rock layers. Dinosaur-bearing Mesozoic rocks are usually dated to around 247 to 66 million years old, whereas the first human fossils don't appear until near the top of the geologic column in rocks dated around 300,000 years ago. Because the geologic column took millions of years to form, and because humans are found in rock layers way above the dinosaur-bearing rock layers, the evolutionary scientists assume that they couldn't have lived together. Creation scientists, on the other hand, use God's word when trying to interpret archaeological and paleontological and geological evidence that we find in the field. Since God is incapable of lying, we can trust what he has to say in his word. In Genesis chapter 1, we're told that God made all the different kinds of land animals on day 6, around 6,000 years ago. That's the same day he made mankind. Well, dinosaurs are land animals, and God created land animals on day 6, so using logic, God created the land animals, including dinosaurs, on day 6. Therefore, Dinosaurs would indeed have lived at the same time as humans. From a biblical perspective, the geologic column and the fossils it contains are best explained as a consequence of the global flood described in Genesis chapters 6 through 9, not slow deposition over millions and millions of years. And yes, because I know some of you are going to ask, I am familiar with radiometric dating methods. I am familiar with them. The reason why I reject those dates, and the reason why creation scientists reject those dates, is because there are a lot of unverifiable assumptions involved in any radiometric dating method, whether it be potassium-argon dating or even carbon-14 dating. All of them have unverifiable assumptions. Since that's not the topic I intend on discussing in this video, check out the links I have provided in my description if you want to learn more information about that. When creationists often bring up dinosaurs living with humans, when they're talking to skeptics, the skeptics are quick to say things like, if dinosaurs were present 6,000 years ago, would that not have made human life rather hard? As the abundance of 20-foot tall killing machines may have made farming and building, and indeed any aspect of life, very difficult indeed. There's no way humans could have lived with dinosaurs. They would have eaten us as snacks. Thanks to the movie and video game industry, when people think of dinosaurs, they usually think of these big, lizard-like, 20-foot-tall killing machines that will kill and fight and eat anything that moves. But while we do have evidence that, from time to time, dinosaurs would have fought, killed, and eaten other animals, including other dinosaurs, from time to time, that's not all they were doing. Dinosaurs weren't Hollywood movie monsters. And this is what a lot of people forget. They're animals. 
And just like modern animals, dinosaurs would have had a lot of other things to do besides hunting and eating and killing all the time. Like reproduction, defending their territory, sleeping. And let's also not forget that most dinosaurs weren't 20 foot tall killing machines anyway. The average size of a dinosaur was about the size of an American bison, weighing about a ton, or a little less than 2,000 pounds. And of the ones that were bigger than a bison, only a few really grew bigger than our largest modern terrestrial animals, like elephants. And those would be carnivorous families of dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurs and the Carcharodontosaurs. So, if dinosaurs and humans did live at the same time, as we would expect from a biblical perspective, and if the geologic column was formed during the flood, why don't we find humans with dinosaur fossils? The reason why we don't find dinosaur and human fossils together is probably the same reason we don't find camels and giraffes together today. Because they live in completely different regions and different environments. Camels obviously live, for the most part, in deserts. Giraffes live in the African savannas. And the two don't really mix. As I've discussed in a previous video, geological and fossil evidence indicates that during the pre-flood era, dinosaurs and other Mesozoic and Paleozoic creatures that lived on land would have lived in lush, lowland, swampy areas, whereas humans and large mammals would have lived in more upland regions. Hence, dinosaur and human interactions were probably rare in the pre-flood world. While evidence for human and dinosaur interactions before the flood are absent from the fossil record, we do have plentiful evidence that humans and dinosaurs lived together in the post-flood era in the form of ancient artwork and legends from virtually every culture in the world. Many of these late surviving dinosaurs, as we now call them, were probably called dragons in ancient times. In addition to the 21 or so different mentions of dragons in the Bible's Old Testament, there are two large reptilian creatures mentioned by God himself in Job chapter 40 and chapter 41. The first one is Behemoth, which is likely a species of large sauropod. The second is called Leviathan, and it was probably a large crocodilian-like animal, such as Sarcosuchus, or perhaps maybe even a semi-aquatic dinosaur, like Spinosaurus. On this cylinder seal from Mesopotamia, we can see pairs of what appear to be sauropods with their necks entwined. When Alexander the Great and his troops invaded India, they reported seeing large hissing dragons that lived in caves. According to legend, the famous Christian martyr, St. George, is said to have fought and killed a dragon that was terrorizing a small town in Libya. Decorating the tomb of Bishop Bell in England are many different species of animals, some of which appear to resemble sauropods. And just like the ones we saw in the Mesopotamian cylinder seal, these two sauropods have their necks interlocked. The Hong Shang culture in China is well known for producing many jade animal carvings, some of which look a lot like dragons. If you look at if you look closely at some of these dragons, you'll notice that they seem to resemble small ceratopsians, maybe something like a protoceratops. The Mississippian Native American cultures also produced dragon figurines, such as this one. China is world renowned for its ancient dragon legends and depictions. One even appears in the Chinese zodiac amongst other well-known animals, like rabbits, tigers, rats, and horses. Explorer and historian Marco Polo also reported seeing some of these dragons as he was traveling through China. Creationists aren't the only ones who've noticed how common these dragon legends and depictions are in virtually every culture in the world. They're so common, in fact, that in his book, The Dragons of Eden, an atheist, Dr. Carl Sagan, wrote, The pervasiveness of dragon myths in the folk legends of many cultures is probably no accident. I agree with Dr. Sagan completely. It probably is no accident. So, if this is the case, why are so many people convinced that dinosaurs didn't live with mankind? Well, that's mostly because of the way they're looking at the evidence. Their worldview that they're using to interpret this archaeological evidence that we're finding. Evolutionists commonly assert that the dinosaur-looking artifacts are fakes and that the dragon legends that seem to be describing dinosaurs are merely based off of encounters with other animals that they believe 
lived with humans, like crocodiles. But these objections aren't the result of rigorous analysis of the data that we're finding. Rather, it stems from an argument that kind of goes like this. Since dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago, humans couldn't have known what they looked like or encountered them. Therefore, all the stories must be based off encounters with animals like crocodiles, and the dinosaur-looking artifacts are just hoaxes or some other type of... fake. <laughs> See what I did there? The problem with this kind of argumentation is that it doesn't account for all the evidence we're finding in the world of archaeology. And ignoring the evidence can allow us to come to the wrong conclusions. Clearly, the evidence doesn't support the notion that dinosaurs died out 66 million years ago. Rather, it supports the idea that dinosaurs, these majestic, beautiful creatures God created around 6,000 years ago, dwelled alongside mankind. That's all the time we have for today. As always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe below for more content just like this, follow me on Instagram, and be sure to check out my brand new website. If you want to visit the website, go to www.ryantheraptorguy.wordpress.com and the website's still a bit of a work in progress, but so keep that in mind, but it's, it's coming along. Also, be sure to check out the resources I used in the making of this video in the description box down below. And remember, every fossil has a story to tell. See you next time.